Welcome back to episode nine of Take Five Friday, where we talk the people and process behind making and maintaining the U.S. diplomatic presence around the world. This week, we welcome back OBO's Director of Cultural Heritage, Tobin Tracy, for a conversation with Daria Gasparini, architectural historian and principal at Robinson and Associates. Robinson and Associates is a woman-owned research and consulting firm specializing in architectural, landscape, and cultural history. Daria has served as the firm's lead architectural historian on several cultural significance studies and cultural heritage reports, including the Stockholm CMR Historic Structures Report. Tobin is a historical architect with over 30 years of experience in both private and public sector work. We're very excited to host them today. Welcome. Hi, Daria. How are you doing today? Hi, Tobin. It's nice to see you. It's a nice way to spend a Friday. <laughs> it is a cold Friday at that for April. Right. <laughs> well, I'm so excited that you could join us today. Um, I've only known you for about five or six years, but uh, I always enjoy working with you. And uh, I think I learn something new every time I uh, spend time with you. You as well. <laughs> So when I was in uh, architecture school, of course, I took architectural history classes, but um, you couldn't major in, in architectural history at, uh, at the uh, school I went to. And I know there aren't many, many schools in the country that offer a degree in architectural history. How did you decide that you wanted to um, major in architectural history and become a, a historian? Well, my, my degree, my advanced degree is actually in historic preservation. So I have a master's in historic preservation from University of Pennsylvania. And my undergraduate degree is, is in art history. So I, uh, I don't know, like many people, I, I think I chose my career path um, partly influenced by my family and how I grew up. My father is a civil engineer. So growing up, every one of our vacations uh, was kind of planned around visiting a canal, a bridge, or a dam. So maybe that's instilled in me a sense of an appreciation for historic history and historic structures. And, you know, I also, I grew up in Shaker Heights, which is a historic streetcar suburb outside of Cleveland. Yeah. And, you know, it's a really beautiful place with uh, walkable neighborhoods and parks and tra easy trans transportation downtown. And then Cleveland itself, itself is um, architecturally very rich. And so even on school trips, we would go to some of the historic um, market halls and arcades that, that are downtown and the art museum is free, so that was accessible to families. And so um, maybe maybe my career path was nature and nurture, I guess. <laughs> so uh, after art history, did you go right into studying uh, historic preservation or did you work as an art historian for a while? No, I went, I started working at a nonprofit that uh, focused on um, uh, heritage preservation. So they did, conservation of music, um, of, uh, of outdoor sculpture and helping small historic houses um, conserve their collections and they focused on collections care and things like that. So my area of focus was with the, um, the organization that was called Save Outdoor Sculpture, which um, we worked with a lot of uh, conservators to uh, conserve um, a lot of the uh, sculpture all across the United States and, and inventorying and doing maintenance and things like that. It was a great program. Yes, SOS, right? Yeah, yeah, you know it. Good. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I always love it when people know it. It has it had such a memorable name that everybody. Yeah. 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 So what got you interested in um, working for the State Department, doing work for the State Department? Well, I, I don't have to tell you that the State Department has um, stewardship over such a wonderful uh, collection of historic buildings all across the world. So as an architectural historian, it was really a great opportunity to work on uh, buildings and, and sites that um, represented styles and uh, movements and building techniques that we might not see domestically. So. Um, and then with a historic preservation background, it, it's nice to uh, learn more about how other countries are caring for and maintaining their historic properties. Um, you know, we, and kind of putting on a historian hat, it's, it's, you're learning about the people and places also who used some of these d diplomatic properties. And in Tokyo, for example, the ambassador's residence was built in the 30s, but in the 50s, it was used um, 
as the home for General MacArthur during the occupation. So right. it's kind of things like that that make that make working for the State Department so interesting. Yeah, a lot of our properties have uh, interesting histories from during the war. Uh, Stockholm, right. you came across that that information on Stockholm as well. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was um, purchased by this by the government in the early forties, I believe. Yes. And then yeah. and then during the war, it was the one of the overseas outposts of the Office of War Information, which um, was kind of the the propaganda. The propaganda outfit for the U.S. government, but a really, really fascinating aspect of the history. Yeah, yeah. Now um, I know that uh, you started working at Robinson Associates. So originally, Judy Robinson was the principal. She had started the firm and That's right. retired, and you bought the firm essentially, right? That's with, right. With a yeah. partner. What are what are some of the biggest challenges you've had to overcome and in, in your career, and and how have you overcome them? So, so as as we were just talking about prior to working for the my current firm, I was mainly working for nonprofits. So certainly, running a small business has been the most challenging aspect of my career so far. And uh, you know, one it's not really an obstacle to overcome. So one way to kind of manage that is to always kind of keep my hand in the aspects of the job that I really love, and that's the the research and the site visits and meeting building owners and kind of digging through the archives and looking through the historic photos. Um, and, you know, and you mentioned that I work with a partner, Tim Kerr, who's the other principal in the firm. And so having a business partner that you can share the load with and bounce ideas off is important. And then, and then Judy has really been a mentor to me and I can't speak for Tim, but he'd probably the say, he'd say the same, that it's important to have um, someone who you can turn to, to kind of ask those questions about, um, about where things are headed and things like that. Yeah, yeah. I had my own business, um, as you know, before I came to yeah. the federal government, and it, there there are plenty of challenges with just running the business and exactly yeah. getting work yeah. in. And uh, <laughs> but it, there's and there's finding that balance of keeping your your hands in doing actually doing the work that you love right. Um, right. while trying to run the business. So. Right, and you know, every year you do it, it does get easier. So. Yes, <laughs> you start to put systems into place and right. Yeah. What um what have been some of your biggest uh, sources of inspiration for you? Well, these days it's talking to colleagues and finding out what projects they're working on. Um, uh, and you know, travel is always the source of inspiration, but that's not really happening these days. I think mm -hmm. that I've become the parent and the family that drags everybody to uh, historic sites and architectural tours and things like that. We took a family trip. Our, our most recent big family trip was to Buenos Aires, and um, I was able to see to visit the ambassador's residence there, Bosch Palace, which is just a, yes. a fabulous property and beautiful gardens. And I think even later that afternoon, we went to uh, to visit a, um, a the River Stadium, which is one of their historic soccer stadiums, and so. That was just kind of a piece. My husband, who's really the so the soccer obsessed fan, so <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Well, great. Well, it's it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Daria, and I'm glad you could join us this afternoon. You too. Uh, and I hope you have a, a wonderful Easter and uh, a, a great weekend. Okay. Thanks, Tobin. Bye bye. Thanks for joining us for our ninth episode of Take Five Friday. Check out OBO's Facebook page for updates on our next episode. See you then.